This video has been created to demonstrate how to perform an experiment using the Brooker Icon AFM in basic tapping mode. Like any of the instruments in SRO, it is critical that users carefully follow the SOP in addition to watching this video. First, we'll start up the equipment. Turn on the large monitor by pressing the button on the right-hand side off and on. The LED light will turn blue, indicating that it is on. Next, turn on both controller boxes located behind the table. Finally, launch the Nanoscope software. Once the software launches, you will see a series of boxes to set up the experiment. In this case, you will select Tapping Mode in the top box, Tapping in Air in the second box, and Tapping Mode in Air Soft Tapping in the third box. Once those items have been selected, click Load Experiment. Next, a dialog box will pop up asking to initialize the stage. Click Yes. The stage will move to various locations for initialization. Then, a second dialog box will ask if you would like to return to the original stage and optical positions. In this case, click No. Since this tool is used by multiple users throughout the university, you likely don't want to return to the stage and optical locations of a previous user. Next, you'll need to load a probe onto the scan head. To do this, open the large AFM door and bring the probe holder base to the preparation area. When selecting a probe to use in your experiment, make sure you pick one with the tip pointing up. Using tweezers, gently pick up a probe and place it onto the probe holder, and then carefully slide and position the spring clip to secure. Remove the probe holder and examine it under magnification using the stereo microscope in the preparation area to verify that the probe is properly mounted and the cantilever is present. Once done, remount the probe holder in the base and return to the AFM. To load the probe on the scan head, loosen the scan head set screw by rotating the knurled knob counterclockwise one half turn. Grasp the scan head and gently lift the scan head straight out of the dovetail guide. Using your dominant hand, attach the probe holder onto the scan head pins. This is important. Make sure you avoid aiming the laser outside the AFM enclosure. Gently push the probe holder all the way down by pressing on the sides and make sure to avoid the tip area. Replace the scan head into its mount and verify it is seated all the way down on the dovetail guide. You should be able to see black alignment marks. Make sure the scan head will not drop down before releasing it. This is the most expensive component of this instrument, so it is critical that you use care anytime you are handling and manipulating the scan head. Once the scan head is secured in the dovetail guide, gently tighten the scan head set screw by tightening the neural knob clockwise. Now it's time to let the software know what kind of probe we're using. To do this, select Setup in the Workflow toolbar. Next, press Load Probe. In the probe configuration, select the tip you will use from the database. And then finally, press Return and Save Changes. Before going any further, it's always a good idea to double check that the cantilever is still attached to the probe, since it can easily get broken off when loading the probe onto the scan head. To do this, we will be moving the laser by using the knobs located on the top of the scan head. Adjust the x-axis using the laser knob to find a point just before the laser point vanishes. Now, move the laser slowly in the y-axis using the y-laser knob to find the point again where the laser spot vanishes. Moving the y-knob in either direction from this point should make the laser reappear. This allows you to confirm that the laser is now on top of the cantilever because it is blocking the laser spot. 
As a final check, you should also be able to see the laser reflection in the scan head window. In the next box, click on Move to the Alignment Station. You will be prompted to verify that you are using a standard probe holder. Since we are performing a basic tapping experiment, you can click Yes. In some advanced techniques, there are specialty probe holders that are not suitable for use in the alignment station. The application notes for these techniques will specifically highlight to users if you cannot use the alignment station. After clicking Yes, you will notice that the mirrored alignment station is moved directly under the scan head. Position the cross close to the tip. This is important because the cross determines the origin when you zoom in. You can zoom in 1x or 2x and adjust the illumination as needed. In the next box, we will adjust focus. We can focus on the cantilever as reflected on the alignment station by adjusting the height of the scan head. You can adjust the speed of the scan head to the right of the focus buttons. As you get closer to a sharp focus, be sure to adjust your speed to the slowest setting to avoid crashing the scan head. You can note the approximate optical position in case you need this information for future troubleshooting. The optic location coordinates can be found at the bottom of the screen. Position the laser on the front one-third of the cantilever so that the sum signal is maximized. This is done by adjusting the laser X direction knob to position the laser at the one third of the cantilever length and then use the Y direction laser knob to maximize the signal, which should be any value greater than 3 volts as shown here. Next, you'll need to align the photodiode. This is done by adjusting the X and Y axis photodiode knobs located on the side of the scan head to move the red dot roughly to the center of the cross shown in the box above the amplitude signal. Fine-tune the photodiode knobs so that both the horizontal and vertical deflection values are less than 0.1 volts. A few things to keep in mind. Make sure that the laser knob should have no more than one millimeter of shaft showing while the photodiode knobs should have two to three millimeters of shaft showing. If the laser knob shaft extends be beyond one millimeter, you will not be able to see the laser. And similarly, if the photodiode shafts are not in the two to three millimeter range, you will not be able to see the cat eye in the scan head window. Once the alignment is complete, press return from alignment station. A dialog box will pop up and ask, would you like to move back to the sample analysis position? Select no. Next, refocus on the cantilever, not the reflection. The image should look like this. If the image looks like this, increase the focus speed and move the scan head up and slow the speed to achieve a fine focus. Now move the cross to the approximate position of the tip, which is at the vertices of the three points. Now press Auto-Tune. Verify that the frequency is correct for the probe you installed. and The drive amplitude is normally less than 1000 millivolts. Click on the Navigate button from the Workflow Toolbar and then click the Sample Load Position. The stage will move so you will be able to load your sample using either the Magnetic Chuck or the Vacuum Chuck. Keep in mind that the Magnetic Chuck does significantly elevate the sample, so take care to allow sufficient space when moving the sample underneath the scan head. The magnetic chuck is designed to accommodate samples that are mounted on metal discs. The vacuum chuck allows for flat samples to be placed directly on the stage and secured by vacuum using the switch as shown here. Once the sample is secured, you can translate the stage so the sample is positioned underneath the scan head. 
The stage can be moved by either using the trackball or the directional arrows on the software. Again, it is very important that the scan head is raised to a sufficiently high level to avoid crashing the sample into the scan head. In the next box, you will select the focus method. It is recommended that you select sample, which is the default, if your sample has features to focus on. If your sample is reflective with no obvious features, then it's recommended to use tip reflection. If your sample is not reflective and it also does not have discernible features, press the sample button and focus on the edge of the sample. After focusing, you can move the stage to the area of interest on your sample. Once you've selected the focus method, adjust the magnification to 1x or less. Move the scan head down towards the sample until the sample features come into focus. You should leave at least one millimeter gap between the sample and the probe tip. Then increase the magnification and refine the focus. Once in focus, navigate to the area of interest on your sample and close the AFM door. Click Scan Parameters from the Workflow toolbar. Verify that the initial scan parameters match those shown in the SOP. Make sure that you always initially engage the probe with the sample at a scan size of 500 nanometers. Also, make sure that the amplitude set point is initially set to 20 nanometers and do not allow that value to be less than 10 nanometers. Once the parameters are verified, click Engage. Scanning will be begin automatically after the beep, indicating that the tip is engaged with the sample. After engagement, click on the tuning fork icon located at the top of the screen to fine tune the probe. Confirm that the offset is 100 nanometers and then click auto tune. Click exit when done. Verify that the ZPiezo voltage range is set to negative 55 volts to positive 55 volts. If not, this suggests that the probe did not fully engage with the sample. Click Engage again and repeat fine tuning. If the ZPiezo voltage is still out of range, you will likely need to replace the probe. Next, you will need to configure your workspace to show the following four suggested channels. Height sensor, amplitude error, phase, and TM deflection, or your choice. The trace and retrace should completely overlap, as shown in the height sensor. To adjust, gradually increase the integral gain by clicking the right arrow key. By improving the tracking between the trace and retrace, you should also see a reduction in the amplitude error. To find the optimal integral gain setting, continue to increase the integral gain until there is obvious noise in the amplitude error signal. Then decrease the integral gain by approximately 20%. Once the appropriate integral gain setting is reached, adjust the proportional gain to 10 times the integral gain. Next, increase the scan size to the region of interest. A dialog box may pop up asking to confirm a large increase in scan size from the initial 500 nanometers. Also, you may need to make adjustments to the integral and proportional gain settings at increased scan sizes. Once all the scanning parameters are optimized, it's time to capture and save the scans. First, you'll want to set the capture directory and confirm that's the location where you wish to store your data. You should also give some thought to your file nomenclature, such as a timestamp data or specific identifying information in the file name. Next, you can set a single capture or a continuous capture. Keep in mind that if the scan has already completed, meaning that the cursor has scanned the complete area of the box and is returning in the opposite direction, you can go to the top menu, select Scan, and click Capture Last. The capture data will show up on the side panel. 
This data is now available for additional analysis using either nanoscope analysis software on the computer or offline using a program like Gwydion. Please refer to the AFM analysis application note for more information on common analysis methods. Once you've acquired and saved your data, it's time to idle the equipment. Click on Withdraw from the Workflow menu. Then select Navigate and click on Sample Loading Position to safely remove your sample without the risk of accidentally bumping into the scan head or probe. Next, open the AFM door, release the scan head, and remove your probe. Place the probe in the probe holder base and reinstall the scan head, tightening the set screw. Return to the preparation area and carefully remove the probe from the holder and place it in your storage gel box. Go back to the AFM and store the probe holder base in the AFM closure. Close the AFM door and now close the software and turn off the two controller boxes.